Hi folks, this is Jason from What You Okay Today. Uh, we're looking at the gospel and I hope it's going to be a blessing to you. Let's come before the Lord. Father God, we come before you today and we thank you for your grace. And Father God, I just pray as we look at your word that you bless us now in Jesus' name and for your glory. Lord, I pray folk might come to know you as their Lord and Saviour. Pray for the Holy Spirit's blessing upon these words in Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen. Okay, we're looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 10. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 1 and 10. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we have our conversation into time past and the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath even as others but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherein he loved us even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with Christ by grace are you saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show with the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself is is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So we're looking at the gospel. And it says in verse chapter 2, Ephesians 2, verse 8, you're saved through faith. This is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God. The Lord Jesus Christ came to give us salvation, which means undeserved mercy. He came and he died for us so that we can live. In John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life there's a hymn that says he how willing was Jesus to die that we rebel sinners might live the life they could not take away how ready was Jesus to give when Christ died on the cross when it says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life when it says that it means that Christ was a savior it means that it means that he came to give you life and so we're going to look at some aspects of the gospel first of all that you're spiritually dead before you come to know Christ you know imagine you're you, you're just lying in the street and you've had a heart attack and you're dead you're dead you can't hear anything you can't hear anybody in the street you can't hear anything that's what it is when you, someone tells you about Christianity you can't hear because you're spiritually dead Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 and for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins we're dead in our transgressions and sins Albert Barnes says so with the sinner in regard to the spiritual and eternal world he sees no beauty in religion he hears not the call of God he is unaffected by the dying of the Savior and he has no interest in it Isaiah 9 2 says the people walking in darkness have seen a great light and those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned if we don't know Christ we're in darkness James chapter 1 15 says then after desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it's full grown gives birth to death we are spiritually dead if we do not know God in Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 to 30 it talks about you have heard that it was said do not commit adultery but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart 
If your right eye causes you to sin, gorge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cause, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Matthew chapter 5, 27, 30. You know, we're, the Bible warns that we're sinners and we shouldn't play around with sin. And if we do, we're dead in sin. There's a coach, an American football coach, who was trying to teach his footballers a lesson. And one day he threw a snake into the courtroom and, uh, and uh, everybody just dashed and ran out. And he said, just as you run away from the snake, so you should run away from sin. But we live in sin, we walk in sin. And in Romans chapter 6, 23, we're warned, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, before we can understand the good news, we've got to understand the bad news. We've got to be honest with ourselves. We've got to recognize that we're sinners. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 3 and 5, it says, For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They think it is strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation, and they heap abuse on you, but they will have to give an account to him who is really ready to judge the living and the dead. 1 Peter 4, 3 and 5. So we're spiritually dead and we have to recognize that. Secondly, there are forces that are influencing us that we don't realize. Satan is a reality and Satan is influencing you and God. In Ephesians 2.2 it says, In which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in, in those who are disobedient. You've been influenced by the devil even if you don't realize it. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, 8 Who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Those are my words there. 1 John 3 8 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. The reason why people can't see the Christian faith is not because they haven't got answers to the questions belonged by the devil. You can't understand Christianity unless you have your eyes open and Satan is keeping your eyes closed. You can read James chapter 4 verse 7, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 and 9, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 to 18, and John chapter 8 verse 40, 44. The point is this, is that the devil is active and he is trying to stop young people from coming to know God. Thirdly, there is the wrath of God. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 it says, All was all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were, here it is, the nature objects of wrath. Francis Schaeffer, a great apologist, says, There is no real preaching of the Christian gospel except in the light of the fact that man is under the wrath of God. Deuteronomy 28, 28, the Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness, and confusion of mind. Proverbs chapter 127, I in turn will laugh at your disaster, I will mock when calamity overtakes you. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1, surely the day is coming till it will burn like furnace, all the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, that day is coming and will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty, not a rot, a root, or a branch will be left to to them, Malachi 4 1. 
John MacArthur says, The gospel message begins with the statement about the wrath of God. Frankly, that is diametrically opposed to almost our evan to most of our evangelistic teaching. More purposely avoids the theme. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6, we read, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Romans 5 9 since we have now been justified by his blood how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him you see the wrath of God is taught in the Bible Matthew 25 30 and through that worthless servant aside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth Matthew 13 42 they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth 1 Thessalonians 5 3 while people are saying peace and safety destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape you see the Bible teaches the wrath to come there is a judgment then the Bible you see God has to punish sin but God is a God of grace he's a God of mercy and so we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken, God smitten and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his words we are healed, wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Isaiah 54, 7. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with deep compassion I will bring you back. Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is low to anger, abounding in love. Titus 3 chapter 3 verse 4 and 7 but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared he saved us not because of righteous things we had done but because of his washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out generously through Jesus Christ our Savior that having been justified by his grace we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life Titus chapter 3 4 and 7 and you can go and read uh, the prodigal son for yourself on chapter 15 verse 11 and 31 God wants to give you undeserved mercy you didn't deserve it but when Christ came he died in your place he shed his blood on that cross was punished for you was broken on that cross and he was taking your punishment deserve it, but God did it for you it's called the free unmerited favor of God Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not of yourselves it is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast this is what the gospel is the gospel is a gospel of grace it says to you no matter how sinful you have been God will forgive you not because of what you have done but because of what Christ has done Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 and 7 and God raised up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace impressed in the kindness to us in, expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus Ephesians 2 6 and 7 God is in Christ and all the mercy of God is in him so we read in Matthew 11 28 30 come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest take my yoke upon me and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light if you want to know the grace of God today God invites you to come it doesn't matter how sinful you've been. It doesn't matter.